record because I did um, promise to record the presentation for those who weren't going to be able to join us today. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining us uh, today to talk about the National Sea Grant Law Center small grant competition for 2019. Um, feel free to use the chat box if you have questions, although I'm not sure that I'll see them um, during the main portion of the presentation, but we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end and we're going to have a small group so um, we'll be able to do it, you know, a live uh, in real time question and answer. So just for those of you who may not be familiar with the National Sea Grant Law Center or may not have seen this for uh, a while, um, I wanted to start by just talking a little bit about what the National Sea Grant Law Center's responsibilities are um, as they relate to um, the grant competition. And so the National Sea Grant Law Center was established in 2002, and we have five main responsibilities as set out in the National Sea Grant Office's call for proposals. So we um, are charged with integrating the efforts of ocean and coastal law resources, researchers and users in the Sea Grant Network, conducting research on ocean, coastal, and Great Lakes issues, providing outreach and advisory services, disseminating, disseminating information and analysis, and then uh, as as seen through this grant competition is, is serving as a focal point for Sea Grant law and related issues and promoting the growth and development of a Sea Grant legal network. And here's just a screenshot of our website. Again, for those of you who may not be familiar or, or know our web address, so all of the work that we do, our publications, our projects, information is available on um, the website. So you can go Google the National Sea Grant Law Center um, or go to the web address on the screen. So into the details of the grant competition, which most of you are probably uh, interested in, is there are, as you saw in the RFP, we have two different categories of grants that we offer through our small grants competition. And the reason for this is that there are already Sea Grant programs that have legal compro programs or legal capacity. And so their needs with respect to funding are a little different than Sea Grant programs that don't have any capacity or have just started thinking about adding capacity. So we have enhancement grants which are intended to provide funding to support the efforts of existing Sea Grant legal programs and projects to engage either in regional work or to work collaboratively to address national legal research ed extension and education needs. For regional projects, they have to address issues of regional scale, um, clearly identify at least one regional partner you know, that is an organization or entity that works at the regional scale. So Gulf of Mexico Alliance, Great Lakes Fisheries Management Commission, you know, those type, type of formal or informal networks that work at the regional scale. And then clearly describe mechanisms for regional interaction. On the national project side, um, that involves a collaboration of two or more members of the Sea Grant Legal Network, um, it's focused on a legal topic that's not currently being addressed by the National Sea Grant Law Center. So again, we're seeking to enhance the work and the breadth of the legal work that the network is already doing. So we're looking for, you know, something new um, that a collaboration can, can add to the existing work. Um, and we want it to result in the development of resources for Sea Grant Extension agents, educators, communicators, and other Sea Grant personnel. And these, because they are intended for programs that already, you know, have capacity, there are a, is a smaller group of programs that are eligible to apply for enhancement grants. And this is just the list of programs that have 
legal capacity that have kind of formalized either in a full legal program like Rhode Island, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or North Carolina, um, or they've got partnerships with uh, law schools or different programs at their institutions that provide that capacity. And so Virginia, Georgia, and Florida Sea Grant have those type of partnership programs. So these are the programs that are eligible to apply for enhancement grants. That means that most Sea Grant programs are looking at or are eligible to apply for the capacity building grants. And so these are designed to provide funding to Sea Grant programs to explore or strengthen institutional partnerships to develop legal programs or provide legal programming in their states. And so we, we really want to help move forward conversations in the Sea Grant programs respective states around um, legal programming. And so we, um, you know, anticipate that if a program has not developed these partnerships yet, they need time to meet with the potential partners, um, have conversations with um, stakeholders, maybe do some needs assessments. And so we broke this funding opportunity into phase one grants and phase two grants. And so phase one grants are uh, really just a development of a proof of concept proposal um, somewhat in partnership with the National Sea Grant Law Center that we would provide guidance, support, uh, connections to the Sea Grant Legal Network um, and the other programs. Um, and the funding is you know, intended to support exploratory activities and preliminary research. So like I mentioned, needs assessment, um, meetings and travel support, uh, and, uh, you know, just to, to go to meet or maybe have a half day workshop um, with potential partners. Um, but the, the idea is really to have those conversations at the state level. Um, this does not mean that um, existing programs, the programs that were on the previous slide, um, would could not be part of these proposals. When um, I talk about what we funded in the last round, um, they all have some sort of interaction um, or involvement of um, existing legal programs. But the, the objective of the funding is really to build the partnerships within your state to address state needs and to get to know um, who those legal, those potential legal partners are. Um, and then programs that successfully complete a phase one grant are then eligible to apply for a phase two grant where you would actually be seeking funding to implement a project that you identified in that kind of proof of concept proposal. And so we're, so um, I should have mentioned enhancement grants, the recommended funding level is $20,000. For the capacity billing grants, it's $10,000 for each of the phases. And so if a program completed both phases, they would um, have applied for a total of $20,000. So here's the list of the 2018 funded projects. Um, there were four building capacity grants and one legal enhancement grant. And so Delaware, Maryland, New York, and Texas um, received funding to engage in um, capacity building. Delaware and, C and Maryland actually submitted uh, a kind of similar proposals or joint proposals and that they are also interested in exploring um, kind of regional connections around the Delmarva Peninsula. And so they held a uh, joint meeting um, in Virginia where they were able to meet with Virginia Sea Grant and the partners at the William and Mary School of Law um, that have been providing legal resources to Virginia Sea Grant um, and to kind of just build off of the work that's already there. And then um, New York Sea Grant is talking to multiple partners, um, multiple law schools in New York um, about you know, their partnership opportunities. And then Texas um, Sea Grant, there is a law school at Texas A&M. And so that's you know, who they've been exploring um, their conversations with. Um, with respect to the legal enhancement grant, the Georgia Sea Grant Law 
program received a grant um, to look at coastal resilience in the southeast and their regional partner um, was the Southeast Regional Partnership for Planning and Sustainability. It's actually chaired by the U.S. Department of Defense. And so they requested funding to have a workshop um, to bring together the regional partners to talk about um, various issues around coastal sustainability, um, also taking into account the defense uh, side of it and military installations which are, are common, as many of you know, um, in the Southeast and, and Gulf of Mexico. So the grant competition timeline, this is right from the RFP. Letters of intent are due at the end of July, July 26th. Um, feedback on the letters of intent will um, come pretty quickly because I want to give programs enough time to be able to address any feedback that we might you know, provide in the full proposal. Um, so feedback is anticipated to be provided by August 9th. Full proposals are due September 20th. And then we you know, are shooting for um, selecting the projects by December 1st. And then the start date will be February 1st, 2020, kind of in alignment with all the other Sea Grant Omnibus Awards. Just a couple of uh, unique funding conditions that we place on this. Um, we, we haven't had it yet, so this is only our second round, and, um, but we require recipients to present project results at um, either a symposium that the National Sea Grant Law Center will organize or a selected Sea Grant meeting. I, ideally, we're shooting you know, for uh, Sea Grant Week to have a session and for all of the awardees and you know in the first two rounds to be able to present but we know um time slots are competitive at sea grant week and so we're not sure whether we'll be able to do that but um we you know would be looking for a meeting where most of the sea grant people are already going so that it's not an additional burden um, but then um we also require applicants to submit, not applicants, but if you receive funding, the grantees will um, write an article for publication in a special issue of the Sea Grant Law and Policy Journal. And the reason for this is that we're trying to disseminate information to other programs that are thinking about doing this or are you know, in the early stages of developing these partnerships to disseminate lessons learned, you know what the results of needs assessments were and we think that it'll be a way to you know help make information um, about these programs more readily available to other programs as they're thinking and, and building and to just continue to build that network so as i mentioned the enhancement grants the recommended funding level is twenty thousand dollars capacity building grants are ten thousand um, programs that satisfactorily complete phase one are then the next year eligible to apply for um, a $10,000 phase two grant. The cycle for applying for phase two, the timing of that is slightly staggered um, because projects aren't wrapping up until January. Um, but, you know, the, I, the, pl the objective is that upon completion of phase one, you have opportunity to apply for phase two. Um, and then matching funds are not required for this competition. So before I open it up for uh, questions, I just wanted to provide a few tips for applicants based on you know, the experience last year and, and some um, feedback that we received from reviewers. So first, institutional support is critical to success. And that's support both from your Sea Grant program, but also from the partners um, that are involved in the project. And so this does not mean that you have to have an existing partnership. We would not expect that Sea Grant programs that are seeking building capacity funds have existing partnerships with their law schools. Um, but what we saw last year is that some programs did did not we're not able to obtain letters of support from project partners that really uh, provided confidence to reviewers that 
the law school or their you know selected partner was committed to engaging in the conversations and, and contributing to the success of the project. So that's one thing to think about with your partners. Um, another uh, question that came up is that, you know, the there's no requirement from who from the Sea Grant program submits the proposal. So we got a mix of proposals, some of which were submitted by the Sea Grant director, and then others were su submitted by like an extension director. Um, and in cases where the proposal did not come from a Sea Grant director, some of the reviewers had questions about whether the director supported the proposal and the project. And um, so there's no requirement from for a letter of support from your Sea Grant director. Um, all we require are letters of support from project partners that are actually going to be carrying out tasks so that we know that they were engaged in the proposal development process. But based on the experience last year, um, if you are submitting a proposal and it is not being submitted by the Sea Grant program director, we recommend that you include a letter from the Sea Grant director to let the reviewers know that the Sea Grant director has been involved. Um, or you know is aware of the proposal and is supportive of um, the project. The other thing is to think of is to be realistic in the sense of be realistic about the budget. Um, we know this is a small amount of money. It's only twenty thousand dollars for legal enhancement and ten thousand for building capacity. That doesn't go very far, and you know the National Sea Grant Law Center and reviewers are aware of that. Um, and so your project activities should align with the budget. So we wouldn't expect programs to be able to shoot for the moon for, for $10,000. And so you wanna make sure that what you're proposing actually makes sense given you know, the limited amount of funding. And, and that's why um, I mentioned that you know, it's really about you know, doing some of the preliminary work to um, kind of formalize partnerships on that you know, phase one grant. Um, rather than really tackling a, a, a major project. Uh, and then finally, pay attention to funding priorities and program objectives stated in the RFP. Um, and so the proposal should clearly state how the proposed activities will either enhance existing Sea Grant legal programming on a regional or national level, if you're submitting an enhancement grant, or how you're building new capacity in your state, if you're um, submitting a building capacity. And so we really want to see that the capacity of the Sea Grant legal network is growing um, through, you know, these funding opportunities. And so with that, um, I'll open it up for questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen just so I can, you know, uh, control Zoom a little better and see if there's any um, chats um, or things like that. And um, Feel free to, you know, you should be able to unmute yourself if you have a question um, or use the chat box as well. Hi, Steph. Mark Wiley in New Hampshire. Um, I have a colleague who sort of viewed the um, RFP a little differently and thought of it from a, an issue first point of view and then the partners, the, um, and this is for the uh, capacity building. The partners would differ depending on the issues. And I kind of looked at it in the way that I think you're describing it, which is for the, for the capacity building, you, you're really first focusing on developing a partnership and then you'll tackle issues with that partner. Is that a more accurate way of thinking about it? Yes, that's, that's the way that we you know, kind of originally envisioned that, that you would build the partnership and then based on you know who was interested in working with you that might inform the issues that you would work on um, i could see potentially though you know if there was a really pressing issue um, that the sea grant program wanted to tackle um, and wanted to like uh, strategically seek out partners to be able to tackle that issue it could potentially work that way as well, um, but it, it, the thinking was more that you would build this partnership and then the issues would kind of be dealt with after that. Right. Yeah. All right, good, thanks.
Hey, Stephanie, it's Kristen in Maine. Hey, Kristen. Hey. Um, so I just had a question from our, that I guess is a follow on from our um, application to this the last time, where um, we had our regional law program, you know, put in a proposal and we in Maine put one in. And it, in, in the end, it, before the letter of intent, and in the end, it seemed like because we were all from the Northeast, you know, like they were sort of competing against each other. And your recommendation was that probably, or there was a good chance anyway, that both would not be funded because we were all in the Northeast. So just wondering how to be strategic about that question this time. Yeah, and I think, you know, we were struggling with, you know, how to, you know, provide the feedback because we weren't sure, you know, how it was going to develop because, you know, we were, you know, striving for, you know, some mix of diversity and, you know, in regions. And so, um, I, you know, it, there's no prohibition on a program being involved in a regional project and then also submitting a letter of intent on, you know, their, their own for a building capacity. Um, I think some of the, the, the um, concerns last year may have been that it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of clarity or um, there seemed like there could be overlap between the proposals that were being submitted last year. And so I think that might be the only piece of advice strategic wise is um, if you, if there are multiple pr proposals going in um, from the region is to just, uh, you know, make sure that there's a clear distinction between the activities um, being proposed under the building capacity and then the one that might be on a regional level. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm forgetting a little bit now exactly what the overlap was the last time, but, um, but sure, I'll make sure that, you know, there's clarity about that. Yeah. Yeah, and we've also we've 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 tried to clarify too a little more on the regional ones that I think that that might have you know um, helped last year with the you know regional mechanisms for collaboration and and that might have also helped clarify that because I don't practically speaking I don't think there was overlap um, between the proposals it was just kind of confusing um, we hadn't anticipated that happening um, the first year. Okay, great, thanks. Well, and I also mentioned that the um, existing members of the Sea Grant Legal Network are, you know, excited. They, well, I don't know, I can't speak for them. I don't know if they're excited, but they are open to, um, being involved in the building capacity um, projects. And so, as I mentioned, uh, Virginia um, has met with um, Maryland and um, uh, Delaware to talk about that. Delaware is also arranged, they wanna come down here to the University of Mississippi to meet with the National Sea Grant Law Center staff in person. That was a part of their proposal that they worked in that they wanted to do a site visit. So they're coming down at the end of July. Um, we, the National Sea Grant Law Center has done webinars um, for you know, various groups like to involved in their meetings, their kickoff meetings and things like that to share information about the Sea Grant Legal Network and how the programs are set up. So we want to provide support to help these conversations move forward. And I know that programs have been sharing their needs assessments and surveys. And so we're, we're hoping that, you know, you're able to tap into and build on um, the resources that are already out there. So if you have questions um, about that as you're developing, you know, your proposals, you know, feel free to um, reach out. We've got, you know, contact information for all the Sea Grant Legal Network programs, you know, on our website, but we're happy to make connections um, as needed. Stephanie, one more question about the number of projects um, funded. Do you think it'll be something sort of similar to the first round? Yes, I think I think it will be. Um, and unless we get uh, 
more proposals. So this first round, we got more capacity building proposals than we did legal enhancement proposals, um, which uh, I, you know, there's no way to know whether that's going to happen again this year. If the mix of proposals in the, is the same, then I would anticipate um, funding in, you know, a similar um, amount um, breakdown between the legal enhancement and the building capacity. Okay, thanks. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, like I said, uh, um, this has been recorded. We'll post it on our website. So if you had any colleagues in your programs that you know weren't able to make it today and weren't interested, um, hopefully we'll have it posted by tomorrow, and and I'll send um, a link out. Um, but they're also free to call if they have any questions in the future. Right. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a great yeah. afternoon. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks.